the majority of cases of acute cough by caused by viral infections due to common cold or flu. Viruses irritate bronchial lining and nerves, which makes them more sensitive to irritants, for example, cold air or speaking, and the person has a cough. This cough may last around three weeks after a common cold. On the other hand, viruses can infect bronchi directly more severely and cause bronchitis. To say it's simply, bronchitis is when the virus spreads not only to the nose and throat and trachea, but also to the bronchi. And it has more severe symptoms. During bronchitis, the cough is more severe. The person may have chest tightness, a burning sensation during coughing, and sometimes a mild fever mild wheezing or breathing discomfort. Coughing may be with mucus or sputum. Acute bronchitis also lasts around three weeks. Acute cough can be caused by other causes also like asthma attacks or chronic bronchitis exacerbations or pneumonia and other conditions but their portion is lower. Remember cough after a common cold or bronchitis can last weeks. Sometimes even up to eight weeks especially in children. Now let's say treatment of acute cough. When the cough is dry, no or very minimal mucus. First hydration is key. Drink plenty of water, warm teas or broths to thin out mucus. Second is using humidifiers or inhaling steam from a hot shower for example. Third is honey. A spoonful of honey intake suits the throat and reduces the cough reflex up to 30%. Remember that honey is allowed after the age of one. Fifth, non-sedating antihistamines like cetirizine and disloratadine help if the cough has an allergic nature. It should be used for a short term. Sixth, dextromethorphan reduces the cough reflex. It also reduces cough frequency around 30%. But Gailey Nines commonly advise caution with dextromethorphan due to its central nervous system action, low effectiveness and side effect risks. Coding and other opioid antitussive medications are effective, but with serious side effects. Sedation, constipation and even dependency can occur. If the cough is of an allergic nature or due to postnasal drip, first generation antihistamines are used like clofeniramine, suprastine or diphenhydramine can be used. But they have a sedating effect and their usage should be minimized. Usually less than 7 days. Decongestants like pseudoephedrine and phenylephrine can be used due to their decongestant effect for nasal congestion and they indirectly reduce cough if postnasal drip syndrome is present. Lozenges with menthol or eucalyptus can briefly numb the throat and suppress spasms. It's temporary but often helpful. If the cough causes wheezing and chest tightness, beta-2 agonists can be used like salbutamol or albuterol, usually inhaled forms. If the cough lasts more than 3-4 weeks, a short course of inhaled corticosteroids can be indicated to reduce airway hyperactivity. They are often used for cough variant asthma or prolonged post-viral inflammation. Now let's say when a person has a cough with mucus, our main goal in this case is to thin the mucus to mobilize it from small airways into larger bronchi and from them it can be expelled. In this case, hydration and humidifiers are still effective. Uafenacin is used commonly as an expectorant because it decreases the thickness and adhesiveness of mucus. Typical dosing of guaifenesin is 200-400 mg every 4 hours as needed. This evidence of its effectiveness is mixed but many guidelines still consider it because it is safe and effective in many cases. N-acetistine and carbocystine are used to thin mucus also. They are called mucolytics. They break down the chemical bonds in the mucus, disulfide bonds and thin the mucus. A common dose is 600 mg2 to 3 times daily for several days, sometimes several weeks. Another mucolytic medication is Ambroxol. It is not available in the USA but popular in Europe. Ambroxol is considered the same potent mucolytic medication as NAC. The usual dose is 30 mg. Some doctors might start with a higher dose AG, 60 mg twice daily for the first few days and then reduce to 30 mg three times daily. Ambroxol is typically used for 5-15 days. In severe cases of chronic bronchitis it can be used longer. Another important supplement is IV leaf extract.
also called Hedera helix, it contains saponins that are thought to stimulate mucus secretion and facilitate its expulsion while also reducing bronchial agitation. It is supported by several studies for symptomatic relief in bronchitis. It is slightly less potent than guaifenesine but with the added benefit of soothing the airways. Usually ivy leaf extract is used for a short term. Cough techniques are also important especially when a person has mucus. The first method is the huff cough. How to do it? Take a deep breath then exhale in three short forceful huffs with an open mouth and relaxed throat. Think about fogging up glasses. The antibiotics are suggested if bacterial bronchitis is strongly suspected. For example, if fever persists more than several days, fever more than 100.4 Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius and more, or fever returns after initial improvement, purness putum, thick colored mucus. This is a key indicator. While viral infections can sometimes cause yellowish or greenish mucus, persistently thick purulent pool like sputum that is dark yellow, green, brown or even blood tinge is more suggestive of a bacterial infection. The color alone isn't definitive, but the consistency and persistence are important. If severe symptoms last more than 10 days, it also suggests a bacterial infection. Sharp, stabbing chest pain that worsens with breathing or coughing can be a sign of pneumonia, a lung infection, which is more often bacteria than virus. Shortness of breath, rapid breathing, tachypnea. Wheezing, if not usual for the patient, or low oxygen saturation measured with a pulse oximeter are more concerning and could indicate a more serious infection, potentially bacteria. Azithromycin, doxycycline, augmentin, levoflexin, or moxifloxacin are the commonly used antibiotics for bacterial bronchitis. Puff 